So I hope you don't mind that intro. I had to have a little bit of fun with it. But last time, trying to bend the tube, I broke some stuff. We were able to get, you know, a couple of degrees, but that's not good enough, especially if it breaks every time. So I've made a few changes. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put it together, try it out. We'll see if it works. And then after that, I'll go through exactly everything I changed. We'll get straight to the fun part. Yep. All right, here we go. Already much better. Uh, looks like the center die split. I think I went too far and actually bottomed it out before it split. Still in one piece on the other side though. Let's see. Not bad. Oh, that's not good. Now let's take it back to the bench. All right, so I would call that, you know, less than successful. I kind of wonder too. Yeah, we only got to like 15. So, summary of changes that I made. Uh, pretty straightforward as far as the dies, which I made a um, little PDF I'll put up that has a quick, you know, change of what I actually did. But basically, we got rid of the hole, made it a little bit larger, added some more meat on these two sides, hopefully to keep it from blowing out the sides there, and then made just a quick steel backer with the you know, actual just metal pivot for it. Some bolts from the scrap bin. You know, nothing too fancy there. And for now, I actually quite literally just hot glued this on there. That's why I just ripped it off so we could see it, but just hot glue to hold it in place. You know, same thing here. You see the whole, whole assembly there. Very simple. How close I can get. Nice. Just a couple of tack welds. Piece of, what is that, maybe about 3 8 And then probably just some 11 gauge, around eighth of an inch. Just to back it. These did fine this time. You know, they look perfect. But this one, our center die split. But it actually, if you saw during the bending process, I think what happened is I bottomed it out and then it split. You know, it's still actually still together, but there we go. You can see the cross section now. So I'm gonna have to print another one of these. Yeah, slightly better. Making slow progress, but We'll have to try it again. See what we can come up with. All right, a couple more changes. I reprinted, I reprinted this last night. This time, I actually used some PLA and printed it at 100% infill. This thing is, it's pretty solid. Well, it is solid, but I also changed a couple of things up here. So instead of the three quarter, just like half round profile, I actually added a straight section of, I think I did like two and a half millimeters, something like that, above that, in theory, to help kind of cradle the tube a little bit better and hopefully prevent it from kinking like this again. I'm also wondering, yeah, I'm probably gonna take just a minute to sand this a little bit on the inside make it as smooth as possible. There's kind of a, a little bump there, you know, and 
the, the ridges from the filament itself. You know, kind of like a, that trick where you stand on top of a soda can and it'll hold a lot of weight, but as soon as there's the smallest little dent, the whole thing will just buckle. So I'm going to sand this out, make it as smooth as I can. Quick few passes with the file. Get most of the big stuff and then probably like 120 grit sandpaper or something like that just to help really make sure it's nice and smooth. So yeah, that, that cuts it pretty well. Yeah, that's a little better. It's definitely smooth to the touch now. Yeah, it fits a little nicer. All right, let's give it a try. So this time I'm also gonna be a bit less greedy. I'm gonna stop short, basically as soon as I see this gap close up both sides. I'm gonna go ahead and stop, and then we'll see what the bend looks like and go from there. So here we go. Well, actually, I'm going to stop there. I made a few other changes to this center curved die, so it's actually starting to interfere with these dies on the side here. So let's stop there and see what we got. All right. Let's see. Oh, well, that's nice. So we do have, I don't know if this will show up on camera. There is a small amount. I can just barely see it and I can feel it. There's a little bit of wrinkling there. And it's a little flat on this back side. But realistically, I would, I mean, I would put that on one of my bikes. Maybe not good enough for, you know, selling a bike to somebody, but of course, you know, in that case, you should just buy a proper bender anyway, but that's, that's a different discussion. I'm actually pretty happy with this. Let's, uh, let's measure it. We have, oh, let me go in frame here, just shy of 12 degrees, that's like 11.7 ish. It's almost 12. I think this is very promising. I'm gonna have to keep pedaling with this, see what other improvements we can make. You know, I originally designed it around like 35 degrees, but honestly, I'm starting to think, I'd, you know, that may just not be feasible for 3D printed, you know, dies. But also, of course, I'm going to clean up the design a good bit. Like one of the things I originally envisioned was making a place in here for some small magnets. That way, you know, it'll just stick in place, that sort of thing. Same thing with these. I could... Um, you know, instead of the the hot glue, same idea, have a steel backer, some little magnets in there. That way you could swap between sizes. And another thing I don't think I mentioned in the first video, another variable we can change is right now, this is a four and a half inch center line radius on the bend, which that's kind of the upper limit anyway roughly you know if you look at most commercially available dies and such that's about as high as they go so it actually might be beneficial for us to increase that you know basically in a sense we would spread these out and then change this radius to match so that might be my next test since we do have I'd call this 85% successful 
<laughs> but I think if we increase the center line radius, then that will also help. And of course, this whole time, I've been using this 3 quarter inch tubing. The theory being this one's more difficult. The, the other tubing that I use for the seat stays is 5 eighths tubing, you know, right, right here. So, and they're both 35 thousandths wall thickness. So in theory, the smaller tube is easier to get a good bend. But yeah, I'm reasonably happy with that for today. I'm going to have to keep drawing it up and modeling and printing and, you know, see what else we can do. I think this is, this is a, a good note to leave it on for today, but we'll, most certainly we'll come back soon for version 3.